Now, there are less expensive options to close the gap between fire starters and something like a grow gun. A really affordable hack, and it might even be free in your house, is if you sneak out your wife's hair dryer, you can use this to stoke the coals, and it will really accept. Jane, seriously! Busted. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and we've all heard the saying, time is money. But today, I wanna to find out if you save enough time to justify the money between something like fire starters versus the grow blazer grow gun. So without further ado, let's find out. So nearly 15 years ago when I bought my first Kamado, one of the biggest disagreements between myself and Mrs. Smoking Dad was the practicality of having a charcoal smoker. And so the argument here was, uh, I don't wanna wait an hour for dinner. So if we wanna do something midweek for the kids, whether it be chicken, uh, chicken breast, hot dogs, burgers, you name it, this was the argument for keeping a propane uh, grill. And I, I didn't honestly love the idea of having a bespoke smoker that sat unused and was reserved for special occasions and or weekend cooks. And so this started the quest to find a faster way of getting to nice clean smoke, which ultimately led me to the Grow Blazer Grow Gun. A couple of years ago, I tested a whole bunch of different methods. So I'm just gonna go with my top two from that video and skip the other uh, examples that I tested, which is the most affordable solution, which is the Komodo Joe fire starters or any fire starter of that matter, and the Grill Blazer Grow Gun. Now at the time, I gave the Grill Blazer Grow Grill gun top marks for its fun, uh, its ease of use, and its speed. But where it fell behind, especially the fire starters, is the price. And so this is sort of that age old argument. Is it worth the price to save the time? And I've never done a head to head to answer just how much quicker it is. But the goal is to see if we can turn something that's normally an hour uh, type long process before we are cooking into something that like your propane grill, if you start it, walk away, come back 20 minutes later or so you are off and cooking. That's what I think uh, we'll try and answer in today's test. Now to make it as fair as possible, the perfect situation would be to have two identical grills. And while they're both Kamado Joe Big Joes, this is the Series 1 Big Joe, and this is the Series 3, which is four inches taller and about another 100 pounds of ceramic. And so since this will disadvantage one slightly over the other, I'm gonna try and give the fire starters as much help as I can. So I'm gonna do the fire starters in the Big Joe Series 1 because it's shorter uh, and a little bit less uh, ceramic volume. Uh, and so that should shorten the time. If I did it the other way around, I think uh, all you guys would just say is, yeah, well, it lit up quicker because it's smaller uh, and the grill torch obviously won. So just keep that in mind in the results that we have to factor for a bigger grill uh, and more ceramic that needs to come up to temperature when doing the Big Joe Series 3. So without further ado, let's get everything ready. I'm gonna clean out both grills add the same weight of charcoal so i'm going to use fogo super premium in each grill try and measure it out so that we're using the same weight and that's not a difference in terms of the amount of charcoal or the type of charcoal and then we'll grab a Komodo joe fire starter start a fire in our big joe series one grab our grill blazer grill gun and start our fire in series three and see how long it takes to come up to a usable temperature now we could pick any sort of temperature we're doing low and slow like 270 to 300 degrees we're doing something like steaks we're going to want over 500 degrees I'm gonna go right in the middle and pick 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Since this was the common temperature when we still had our propane grill before I was able to replace it by uh, finding ways to light my charcoal grill even faster, uh, 400 degrees was a common temperature for a whole bunch of things we were doing, whether it be frozen burgers, chicken breasts, or hot dogs for the kids, you name it. So that's what I settled on for today's test. Let's get our two fires going. So everything's empty, cleaned out, add in our charcoal, repeat. Also empty, ready to go. I will note I am using an upgrade on the Series 1, which is the Kamado Joe basket. I've been a big fan for a long time of the Kickash basket, but the Kamado Joe one comes with these tabs that our divide and conquer rack loops into, plus they also hold our deflector plates. So the fitment, uh, given the comparable price, is just so much better at how it fits in, plus it allows me to drop in deflector plates and do other things and gain almost a whole nother cooking level. For practically the same price, I. I think Kamado Joe makes a better basket. So that's the basket that I've got, the one upgrade to the Series 1. Let's add in our charcoal. 
So again, in the spirit of keeping with fewer variables, I'm not going to use the deflector plates or the slow roller. The Series 3 comes with a slow roller. It's a standalone accessory after the fact for Series 1. Uh, since the deflector plates, again, based on their positioning above the fire differences, it can just add um, a whole nother variable. So I'm gonna go for 400 degrees on our temperature gauge. Now, there's a couple ways that we can get 400 degrees. We get 400 degrees from a rogue flame coming up and starting to read 400 degrees, but when we feel our dome, it's cold to the touch. So I'm gonna follow my normal plan, which is just going by touch and feel to make sure that it's warm. That's not really fair since it's just me saying it's warm or not. So I also am going to use my IR gun and take a measurement of the outside. So when it starts to get that, I can't hold it more than five seconds. We'll confirm what temperature it is with the IR gun and make sure that we're seeing the same thing on each grill. So it's a little bit more scientific than it just feels hot or it doesn't feel hot. Then we'll put our vents in setting as if we were holding 400 degrees uh, and make sure that it holds it for a few minutes and we'll lock in on our time. I've got a timer set up behind me that I will start the second that we start our fire with our starter cube and immediately move over to start our fire with the grill blazer grill gun. So let me get you nice and close since we're gonna move really quick and I'll probably be walking back and forth in front of you a couple times, but that's just so we start as close as possible to the exact same time. Okay, I've got my fire cube and just a little torch that will light this. Soon as it's no longer needing the torch to go and it's lit on its own, I'll start the timer and then move over and do the exact same sequence with the Grow Blazer Grow Gun. Take it fast forward. Nestling that down in the coals. All right, we have combustion. Start timer, grab the Grow Blazer Grow Gun, fire it up. Okay, so that's about one minute of elapsed time, which is what I always do with the torch. So let's close the dome, bottom is all the way open, top's all the way open. Same thing over here. And let those build heat. Okay, we're at, or we've just passed actually the six minute mark. So it's been at least five minutes for each grill with a fire. Let's take a look at the fire inside each and see how we're doing. Okay, our Big Joe Series 3 that we use the torch on is just about reading 250 degrees, but the dome is still not really warm to the touch. I don't know if you can see down in there, but we definitely have some charcoal burning. Let's close that. Move over to our Big Joe Series 1, and the dome is about 190 degrees, even cooler to the touch. Let's take a look. And right now we are mostly the fire starter burning. So I'm gonna close that up and just let that continue to burn. Okay, we are at 12 minutes and 34 seconds and our dome definitely has some heat in it. Now, the fact that I can hold this here as long as I am, this is not 400 degrees. 400 degrees would be uh, about two seconds and it start getting uncomfortable from there. But just for a baseline marker, I'll do about a hand's width away, right above our dome. Our ceramic is reading 147 degrees. It's not really changing. So as we've climbed already, now we're about 430 degrees. Let's close our dome. Stabilize about the midway there. And I'm gonna go down to uh, one finger's width on the bottom draft door. Okay, I just made the adjustment to our Big Joe Series 3. So the clock is at 13 minutes and 49 seconds and our dome is much cooler here. Let me do the same sort of distance. So we're sitting about 89, I don't know if you can see that, 89 degrees on the Thermoworks IR gun. So pacing about half right now. Okay, we are right at 15 minutes and this is now the spot where we're about that one to two seconds. I don't really want to hold it much, lo much longer. So let's take a temperature and we have jumped we're about 176, 182, 183, 185, 184. So I think the average there, we'll call that about 184 degrees. And let's take a look at our fire. So we have nice white ashed over coals, clean burning combustion. I'm not getting any off smell from the charcoal when it's brand new and just lit. This smells ready to cook. So I'm gonna call, stop the clock there. That was right at 15 minutes when we did that test. Let's go check on our uh, series one. 
warming up slowly but not too much of a difference since last time so i don't want to keep opening the dome and let that heat out as it is starting to build heat now but we'll just wait till it gets to about the same spot as our series three and compare uh, versus 15 minutes to where this lands up for our time difference so we've just adjusted our vent on our Big Joe Series 1. It gives me an opportunity to explain why this is an important part of the step. So the reason that we wait, uh, and doesn't matter what the temperature reads until we feel heat in the dome, is because we really want to take advantage of all the heat properties that a Komodo offers. We have conduction heat, which is our food sitting on the hot grill. We get the radiant heat, which is what we're focusing on here. But if we just start to install our deflectors and things like that, we don't properly heat soak our dome. And what will happen is if we install our deflectors and our food you'll adjust your vents and you'll think great I'm ready you'll come back an hour or two later and all of a sudden your temperatures have started to spike way beyond what you want and that's just because the dome wasn't heat soaked and it's continuing to absorb heat and energy and once it finally does get heat soaked your temperatures will start to spike because your air vents weren't set where they uh, where they should have been and so the way to uh, help manage this and make it really easy to repeat every single time is to do what we did let it fly until you feel heat in the dome doesn't matter 200 to 600 degrees if you don't feel heat in the dome let it keep going once it starts to hit your target temperature like 400 degrees which is what we're looking at today this is when i want to now close the bottom vent and the top vent to about their approximate positions because now we want to start to trap that heat in the dome and that's really going to accelerate how much of the heat is being absorbed by the ceramic if we just let it open all the time that uh, tunnel of hot air is racing out the top of our Joe and not heating it and it will make it take even longer so this is actually a faster way to heat your grill closing the dome and closing your vent down a little bit versus just letting it fly so give this another couple minutes and we'll take an infrared reading uh, and see what the total time difference is between our two grills okay here we are about the 40 minute mark still rolling along right at 400 degrees and if I take a temperature seeing oh, sorry focus about 254 on our Big Joe Series 3. Our Big Joe Series 1 just over 400 degrees. And likewise, take, take our temperature still riding around 209, 212. But we are definitely feeling like we are there ooh, hot, on the dome, even though it's a little bit further behind. So as we saw a big difference in time, 15 minutes versus 40 minutes. Now there are less expensive options to close the gap between fire starters and something like a grill gun. A really affordable hack, and it might even be free in your house, is if you sneak out your wife's hair dryer, you can use this to stoke the coals and it will really accept. Hey, seriously. Busted. Well, I don't want to start any domestic disputes, but that is a way that you can accelerate your coals and help reduce the gap. Otherwise, if you don't want a domestic and you want to have your very own, I'll be sure to put a link down below. I didn't have this a couple years ago when I first bought my Grill Blazer Grill Gun, but they offer now a save 10% to friends of the channel. So uh, whether it be the sous vide gun or the grill gun, you can get 10% off. Um, and this is where the grill gun is actually a bit more handy other than just our time savings today going from 50 minutes versus 40 minutes so saving us that 25 minutes there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do with the grill gun that's handy whether it be lighting our solo stove offset campfires or even burning weeds in the driveway so uh, there's a lot more that you can get out of your grill gun other than just starting coals but that's about it uh, for today I'm glad to confirm what I suspected is true is that something like the grill blazer grill gun helps us change our maybe bespoke smoker from special occasions and weekends to an everyday day grill i don't remember i don't i never really timed it but 15 minutes feels about in the ballpark of what a gas grill used to be in terms of when i would set it uh, and then bring food out and get it on so to be able to take the largest kamado joe offering the times are shorter for the classic as well as the joe jr uh into the realm of everyday cooking is absolutely one of the reasons i love the grill blazer grill gun and that i was able to sell and get rid of my uh, propane grill since i no longer need it when i can get my biggest kamado uh, food ready in about 15 minutes time 
I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let YouTube know by smashing that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe, which will enter you in my draw. As soon as I cross 100,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a Komodo Joe Classic Series 2 along with some accessories. All you need to do is hit subscribe and you're already entered. If you've already subscribed before, don't worry, you're already in. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue signing off. So remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. 15 minutes quicker. <laughs>